if I, for whatever reason, as a dividend growth investor, was starting over all the way tomorrow at zero, there is a lot of things I would do completely different when it comes to dividend growth investing. Now, in this video, I'm going to give you five specific stocks and ETFs that I personally would purchase and build out as a foundation if I was tomorrow starting over, completely building out a long-term dividend growth portfolio. Knowing everything that I know today after investing over a million dollars in different dividend paying stocks and ETFs over the last six or seven years of my dividend investing career. Now, if you want to see which stocks and ETFs I would choose if I was to start over all the way as of tomorrow, make sure to stick around, drop a like down below, and let's get right into it. Real quick for those that haven't already, make sure to go to the first link in my description and grab my new dividend investing ebook where I share exactly how I went from $0 invested to now earning over $6,000 on a monthly basis and over $1 million invested in the market. Along with the ebook, you're also going to receive my custom dividend tracker where you can track your dividend progress on an ongoing basis and reach your dividend investing goals. So make sure to grab yourself a copy of my dividend investing ebook and the new dividend tracker today it's the first link in my description so like i sort of mentioned in the intro there's definitely a lot of stocks and etfs even in my long-term portfolio as of right now that i regret not buying more of and of course i regret buying in the first place there's also stocks and etfs in this portfolio that i'm very happy i bought when i did and names that i would consider buying whole forever positions within this portfolio now laying down some of the groundwork one of the things that i would for sure do knowing what i know now as a long-term dividend growth investor is buy different stocks or etfs that i'm not going to have to worry about from day one and especially when it comes to that i would buy into etfs as my first few positions simply because they're diversified you're getting a lot of pieces of different companies and you're going to sleep pretty well at night knowing that if one company two companies has a bad day a bad week or a bad month your portfolio is not going to shift around all that much which trust me in the early days that can definitely mess around with your mental now, the first position that I would purchase as a brand new dividend growth investor, if tomorrow I was starting over at nothing, I would start off by buying some shares of the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF SCHD. And this is because this ETF is tried and true. This ETF has grown over time. Consistently, it pays a decent starting dividend yield of around 3.5% more or less. And this ETF is also very, very cheap to own. Now, I look back at my early days of my investing career and I ask myself, why in the world did you not buy more SCHD just as a foundational position? Yeah, it's fine if you want to do some single stock picking and have some fun with investing like all new investors want to do. But laying the groundwork in your portfolio with a high quality, tried and true, time-tested dividend growth ETF like this one, I have no idea why I didn't buy more early on. Now, the next ETF that I would buy if I was starting over at zero as of tomorrow is something very similar to that of SCHD. Although DGRW, the Wisdom Tree US Quality Dividend Growth Fund, not only pays a dividend monthly, unlike SCHD, which pays a dividend quarterly, which who doesn't want to get paid dividends a little bit quicker, but also DGRW, because of the holding breakdown, has a little bit more potential to grow a lot more over time because of the names like Microsoft and Apple being the first two biggest positions in this overall ETF. Not to mention, DGRW also has 299 holdings in the ETF. So it's extremely diversified, especially as a brand new investor starting with zero, having some of these types of names as your foundation for building a long-term dividend growth portfolio is sort of a no-brainer. And again, I really ask myself and wonder why I didn't buy more of this type of things early on in the beginning stages of my investing career, but I think I know why. I definitely suffered with shiny object syndrome and wanted to stock pick and wanted to chase high yield. You know, all of the rest that all new dividend growth investors want to do. The next single stock that I definitely would purchase if I was starting over at zero tomorrow and this might be a little bit of a controversial one, but I would definitely buy shares of ticker symbol below Realty Income, which happens to be one of the single stocks that I, that I did purchase early on in my investing career, and I've been holding for several years now, but I personally would buy Realty Income in the early days if I was starting over because Realty Income gives you exposure to some of the highest quality real estate across the entire market, and I personally love real estate. I really love having exposure to high quality real estate. Realty Income not only has paid dividends every single month for several, several years, but also has been slowly raising their dividends year after after year paying investors like myself more and more cash flow over the years. A real example of this, when I started buying real income back in 2018, 2019, I was getting paid around 21, 22 cents per share of ticker symbol that I owned. Now fast forward a few years later, I'm getting paid 26 cents per share per month, which might not seem like that big of a bump, but when you have hundreds or maybe even thousands of shares later on, it's definitely going to be substantial. So for those reasons specifically, I would definitely pick Realty Income as a single stock position in my portfolio if I was starting over at zero tomorrow. Another ETF that I would purchase if I was starting over tomorrow and an ETF that I wish I would have went a lot heavier on, bought a lot more of early on, although I do have a sizable position of it as of right now, is the JP Morgan NASDAQ Equity Premium Income ETF or JEPQ. 
Now, Chapter Q is more or less a typical cover call style ETF, but because the holdings are pretty concentrated in higher beta names, it not only has offered decent dividends over the years, around 8, 9, 10% at times, but also has grown substantially over time. I mean, the ETF is up around 14.69% on the one year time frame. Not to mention the ETF, like I said, pays around 7 or 8% yield as far as dividends go and pays dividends on a monthly basis. Now, there's, of course, other covered call style ETFs across the market, things like QYLD, things like JEPI, of course. But out of all the ones that I purchased in the early days of investing, JEPQ has probably performed the best out of all of them and then some. So if I was starting over tomorrow all the way, and if I wanted some exposure, there's a little bit more income, a little bit more cash flow, I definitely would go a little bit heavier on JEPQ. Although, like I said, I'm definitely happy I bought some of it early on in my investing career. Now, the last high quality ETF that I would purchase if I was starting over at zero tomorrow. And remember, this is a thought experiment, not trying to hit home runs every single time, trying to lay down a foundation for your long term portfolio. My strategy, my personal methodology is building out a foundation for your portfolio with high quality, moderately beta different stocks and ETFs that aren't really going to shift around your portfolio all that much, but just laying the foundation, the groundwork. And then after that, if you want to buy some single stocks or ETFs that you think you're going to hit, doubles, triples, or home runs, I have absolutely no problem with that. And not to mention my strategy is not necessarily the best one, it's just my specific strategy. But knowing all that now, I definitely would buy more Devo or the Amplify CWP Enhanced Dividend Income ETF. Now this is an ETF that owns a small basket of holdings around 35 different stocks, and all stocks honestly that I like having exposure to. But on top of that, Devo also sells covered calls and earns investors around 4.5%, 5% yield on a yearly basis, which are paid in the form of dividends on a monthly basis. Now, Devo has been a great position in my long-term portfolio. It's basically slowly went up in price over time, paid dividends every single month, and sort of stays out of drama. Because of that cover call overlay, it's not all that volatile, but it still does have the potential to grow a little bit. Devo is not necessarily an ETF that you're going to hit a double with or a home run with, but it's a slow and steady ETF that's most likely going to grow your portfolio over time and pay you cash flow along the way. So for those investors out there that want some exposure to price appreciation, but also want some cash flow, like most dividend growth investors do, including myself, of course, Devo is a great foundational position and an ETF definitely worth looking into. So those are just five positions that I would choose to purchase. Different stocks and ETFs, if tomorrow, for whatever reason, I was starting over at zero, knowing what I know now. The craziest part about investing, and I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to this, is that over time throughout your investing career, you're going to hit new milestones where you understand things different, or maybe your strategy shifts and has different things it aligns with, to where you're really going to see different stocks and ETFs in a different light. But regardless, I think the fact still remains, until you have more or less all the basics covered as far as investing information, knowing what you're doing, and again, trying to figure out different assets that truly align with your strategy, I think it's a perfect idea for a long-term dividend growth investor that once again wants exposure to price appreciation, but on top of that wants cash flow, to buy into tried and true different ETFs and solid stocks, and then build upon that. But now lastly, most importantly, I have a question for you guys down below. If you were starting over for whatever reason tomorrow at zero, knowing what you know now, what is the number one position you would add to your long-term dividend growth portfolio? Drop the ticker symbol in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please drop a like on it and subscribe for more future content like this. Thanks as always for stopping by, and if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here.